okay, we're finally ready to wrap up for the day. We've defined what a disciple is, and we've talked about the different stages of discipleship. So now we're going to we're gonna just talk about what does it look like to make disciples? What is disciple making? Because this is what we're talking about is how can we create a reproducible process for making disciples in a small group setting? So let's talk about that. Give it a definition. Basically, disciple making is inviting other people to follow you as you follow Christ. This is what Paul did in 1 Corinthians 11. He said, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Another translation has it, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's at its root, that's what discipleship is all about. So what we're doing is we are first and foremost pursuing truth, relationship, and purpose. We're doing it, but we're doing it in a group setting. We're doing it so others can see us. And then what we're doing is we're saying, you need to go start your own groups. So we model it. We model a life that is committed to God's truth, that's committed to relationship with God and others, and committed to accomplishing our purpose in life, a big part of which is making disciples. And then we make sure that they do it. Make, we make sure that they go out and do the same thing. So the way we do it in our groups is critically important because we need to make sure it's reproducible. And this is exactly what Jesus did. He didn't complicate it for his disciples. Look at the Gospel of John, the first chapter. Uh, when he's calling his disciples, it says that Jesus, this is what he basically said to all of them. He found Philip and he simply said to him, follow me. He didn't give him a long list. He didn't tell him exactly what he was going to be doing for the next three years. He just said, follow me. And that's exactly what Philip and the others did. They followed Jesus through the course of those three years and they learned truth from, from him. They learned how to do relationships from him. And then they learned how to pursue your purpose from him. And this is exactly what he did. And this is what they learned. And then if we go to the end of John, the end of the, of, uh, the gospel of John in chapter 21, after Jesus died and rose again, he's reinstating Peter and the other disciples. And he looks at Peter. He had just made breakfast for Peter. And he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And so Jesus said, well, then feed my lambs. Now just pause and look at this. What he's basically saying is, if you really love me, if you've really learned from me, if, you've re if you really have connected in relationship with me, then you're going to do what I've been doing. He, he's, he's basically saying, I'm leaving now, and you need to now carry on this work. Feed my lambs. In other words, care for people the way I have cared for people. In other words, make disciples the way I have made disciples. And then he says at the end, I love this. He says, after saying this, he said to Peter, follow me. Now, we know he's actually talking, in this case, specifically about the kind of death that Peter was going to die. But I think it still proves the point that in the first chapter of John, the disciples are invited to follow Jesus. In the last chapter of John, Jesus says, follow me one more time to Peter, basically saying, are, are you willing to do whatever it takes to follow in my footsteps? And that's a good question for us as well. This is what Jesus is asking of us. This is what discipleship is about. It's about following Jesus and then inviting other people to follow along with us. And so Jesus started a small group and he modeled this kind of life. What kind of life? The life of a disciple. So once again, let's keep it simple. So it's rooted in truth, God's truth, biblical truth. It's full of relationship with God and with others, and it's embracing purpose. And so that it's not, it's not a rut, it's not a dead end, but it actually is pointing to something greater than yourself. And this is just what Jesus did. It's important to understand, Jesus led his group for only three years, but it changed the world. One small group changed the world. One small group after leading it for just three years, and then Jesus left. And he led that group knowing he was going to leave and knowing that if he didn't teach them and if he didn't make it simple, then it wouldn't continue to this day. But he did teach them and he empowered them to do the same thing for others. And that's what we have to think about for our church. What do you think might happen with just one group in our church that did this well? What kind of impact would it have? What would it look like? What kinds of people would be in it? Let's consider these questions as, as your group meets over the next few weeks. So uh, now that we're done with this group launch series, you're going to meet over the next four weeks. Pick a study from Red Notes. Make sure to do that so it's reproducible. 
so that we're all measuring the same thing, we're all on the same page. And think about this. Think about these questions as you as you meet in this group over these next four weeks. And then make sure you schedule that brainstorm date. Get all of the people that have been involved in these first two phases together and make sure you talk this through and say, what does phase three look like for us? How can we make sure that we're launching groups that are reproductive, that are that are reproducible? and that are making disciples in a small group setting. I encourage you to do that as you go on through these next four weeks.